This is Feminine Plays coming back at you with yet another review. Now, today we are reviewing the Friday the 13th, Part 5, New, New Beginning, NECA, Ultimate Roy Burns action figure. Now, this thing was hard as hell to get. Because you look online and it goes to quite high prices. We're talking 30 sort of quid, edging towards the near too expensive sort of phase. But anyway... I was lucky enough to get this absolute masterpiece of a figure for my birthday, which was last week or so. And it's been one that I've really wanted for a while because, you know, the last time they did this was in the uh, retro cloth line. And when you're thinking, when you think about it, that was actually quite a while ago. I'm going to say um, sort of 2005, we're talking. And you think... It's 2020, so we're getting on quite a bit, but they released this absolute masterpiece last year. I'm so thankful they did. Now, just taking an initial look at this figure, we can see that he comes with a whole plethora of um, accessories. And, you know, there's a lot of kill-specific accessories with all blood on them. And I would say that NECA actually really have improved the uh, blood stuff on their figures. And... I won't lie to you, I'm absolutely loving it. Like, if we take a quick comparison, the uh, Ultimate Part 4 machete next to this one's machete, and you can see the uh, silver sheen actually has been improved. Yes, they're different types of machete, but I think the way that they've done the blood on the uh, Part 5 one looks absolutely brilliant. But without further ado, let's get this bad boy open. Reveal time, ba da da da. Let's move this to the side for a second. Oh. Put that to the side. Perhaps we'll put it just there. And then bring us on. And here he is. Ultimate Roy Burns. Out of the box. Would collector or not? I'm sure that you can agree that this is an absolute masterpiece of a figure. Like, literally, just looking at it. The sculpting is amazing, and I thought I might just go over this so I'm not rambling on about it like I usually do in most of my reviews, because that's kind of what I get stuff on. But the sculpting on this is actually really, really nice. Like, um, this is a completely unique boiler suit, comparing it to images that I've seen online of um, this boiler suit and the uh, boiler suit from the Halloween 2 Ultimate Michael, which is yet another figure that I want to get. You can see that they're completely different, and they've been cons and they've been sculpted completely differently. I mean, I guess one like dead giveaway that's a different sculpt is the massive rip in the chest, which is from when uh, what's his name, the kid, Reggie the Reckless, drives the uh, construction sort of vehicle into him, and then it kind of almost impales him and like ruptures his stomach a little bit. But yeah, and you can see this kind of all these creases in that run down here, as they would, and uh, go on to the legs. I'm just trying to get that in the life a little bit more. Oh. So when we go to that. But yeah, you can see it's all creased around here as it would be. And they've done this really nice sort of like black wash here where that's got in or, you know, it's just kind of being crinkled and there's just some sort of like the uh, fabric dye is starting to come off. Like say if you were to wear a pair of jeans for like ages and ages, then you notice like kind of rips starting to appear and some sort of like loss of fabric colour. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on down there. And coming back up to the arms, however, you'll notice that there isn't any cuts or anything like you'd expect to see, because if you've seen the film, then you'll notice then you'll know that um in one part he hang on a second, I just need to get my pointer. You'll notice in one part of the film that he um Sustain, sustains damage to his like shoulder over here because of like a chain because he's in the middle of a chainsaw fight and stuff and then he should also have like a cut over here on his arm here except they haven't chosen to do that and if I'm entirely honest then I'm glad they have I'm glad they haven't used an excess of blood because I feel like that would kind of ruin the aesthetic of the figure and you know just overdo it sometimes because with blood you've got to be quite careful because you can't be overdoing it or anything Coming onto the back of the figure, we can see he's got this like really nice uh, sculpting detail. Oh my god, why does he keep going so bloody dark? We can see he's got this um really nice sculpting detail going all along here. We can see it's almost like it's being threaded in. Yeah. 
You see it's like going along here. We can see there's all these like little individual lumps and bumps where it's been. And just the general way that they sculpted the fabric as well. Like the boil the uh, boiler suit as well. It genuinely just it looks incredible because you can see it's almost like actual fabric fa uh, fabric material like you'd expect to see on a boiler suit, all these like unevenness and such. And then over here as well, all these creases and there's like ass and stuff. And towards his like inner legs and stuff and his back leg. It just looks fan bloody tastic. Also, another big thing about this, if you uh, aren't a Friday fan, then I'm sure you I mean, I'm sure most Friday fans will know this, but there has a, been a on, long ongoing debate on whether the costume in the film was either a blue boiler suit or a green boiler suit. But NEGA, as you can see here, they've kind of settled on a more sort of cyan-y, sort of greeny blue color boiler suit. And I think that looks fun bloody fantastic i think it looks just like the thing we see in the film and it looks just really good with the figure it blends so well and i was just watching a few reviews on this before but, and i can kind of clearly point out as well it's really like focus there we go they've done some like airbrushing over here of like where blood stains will have come out from the uh, gashes here and they haven't gone over the top with that with other figures say like they would on i don't know leather face or something for example on his apron they do blood spatters all over it because you think he's quite a manic character and that's kind of one time where an overdue of blood spatters is actually kind of needed because you think he's a manic character he's not really going to be um too precise with the things he's just going to go and cut whatever he can Coming up to one of the key features though, which is the head, we can see that the mask itself is actually sculpted somewhat differently from masks that we'd see on other Jasons, like something, I don't know what it is, but it just looks slightly slimmer and the shape of it looks different. Like if I was to get my um a mask from my part from my part for Ultimate Jason, just a quick comparison. If I put it, hold it by here. You can see what I mean. There's a different shape about. There's a different shape to it, and it almost seems because this one over here, it almost seems to be wider than that one. Like you've still got the same sort of base color, except this one seems more of a sort of creamy white, off white with all this. If you if you see uh, if you look closely, focus. There we go, you can see it's almost got this grey dry brushing going over it to kind of make it all dirty and worn and it looks very, very different from the uh, retro cloth, Jason, which I don't have to hand because for one, when the figure was released, I was completely unaware of the Friday franchise and two, I don't know if it's just my personal preference, but I've never really been into the retro cloth figures, like, I feel like they look a bit too big and clunky with the extra clothes and I just feel having the ultimate ones by hand are just better as well. And uh one thing that my little brother picked up on because yeah he's kind of trying to follow in my footsteps and stuff. He picked up how they've uh, done the hood really well and how they've made it actually looks like a mask because you've got like the little seam here at the back and it's just an odd material and it's completely different from his neck and he said well, then is it supposed to be like that? And I was like, yeah, because he's meant to be wearing a thing. And then he also picked up on, oh my god, look, they've done the uh, axe mark as well, which is just like you'd see in the film, because, I mean, you kind of tend to notice it more, because you don't really get that, that often to look at it, even though the film tends to focus on Roy and his reactions, like how he moves and stuff. But, yeah, you tend to see it more when he dies, after he falls into the uh, farming place or something. I do believe, and uh, yeah, without further ado, how about we go, uh... oh, also something else about the mask, you can see here that it's almost like a proper embroidered material here, like they've done a sort of whitey silver going along it, like little threads going into it, and it genuinely looks really nice, because it's a quite a bit of change from this one, where, because as you can see here, it's just a more of this like black elastic leather thing with a few buckles on it. And, um, that's about it. But yeah, taking off the mask, we have 
the big reveal. Da 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 da. Oh my goodness. It's not Jason Voorhees. It's actually Roy Burns. And I just need to say, that is an absolutely impeccable sculpt. Because for one, it looks all kind of odd and wet and kind of sweaty, just like you would be if you were running around all day killing the councillors and then getting stuck in the rain. It still looks great, like, the kind of red underneath the eyes, it just, that just really looks fantastic and everything, and the hair as well, the sculpting. So as you can see there, they've kind of done his teeth on show as well, which is like, because he's all like, you know, angry, he's like, oh, someone killed my son, because they, uh, they rejected his chocolate bar, but... Yeah. Jokes aside, absolutely fantastic sculpt. Same with the neck, same with all of this, and same with the collar as well. I'll just get quickly get a Michael Myers figure so I can show you what I mean about the differences between the two boiler suits. Putting these two figures side by side, you can clearly see that the uh, 2018 Michael Myers, which is the uh, only Michael that I have to hand currently, but I'm not complaining because it is an absolutely fantastic figure. And, uh, if you haven't checked out my review for that one, I shall post the uh, link to it in the description below so you guys can go check that out if you like. But as you can see here, the collars are completely different on this one. Like you can see here, this one uh, actually has like four lapels like you'd expect to see on a stereotypical one. And this one just has the uh, massive collar, almost like some sort of Dracula thing. It's kind of stuffy up and it's almost like more pronounced and makes him look a bit, that tad bit more menacing. I don't know why, and the, uh, you can see here, the sculpt's are completely different, because that one has a little pocket thing, that one does not, that one doesn't have a pocket, that one does, and there's no damage here, of course. And, um, coming down onto the, uh, sort of, um, the, uh, pants area of it, it seemingly sort of looks the same, but if you look closely, then you can sort of tell that it isn't, because even, like, the wrinkles and stuff kind of give it away, like... Look, there's a lot more wrinkling there. Not not that much wrinkling there. Same with the, the legs, you know. They kind of look the same. I mean, they might have reused the legs. Just looking at them quickly. They might have, but it looks to me as if they have Look at Jason's accessories. We shall start with the uh, massive skewer stick that Roy slash imposter Jason uses in one of the most... I don't... I mean, I don't want to say infamous... But I'd say kind of iconic as a movie meme of the film. From the uh, scene where, you know, demons in the uh, really bad looking port potty. I mean, or portable kind of outdoors toilet as we call it here in England. Um, he, he, so he's kind of trying to take, in, take a crap in that because he's like, damn, damn enchiladas. Hey, you okay? <clears throat> damn enchiladas. Oh. You gonna be all right? That's why you don't eat enchiladas, kids. So yeah, he's uh doing his business in there, and then his uh girlfriend Anita is coming around and comes, and she's like, "Ooh, baby, ooh, baby," and then he responds back, "Ooh, baby," and then everything goes quiet, and he's like, and then uh someone starts shaking it, and he's like. Hey, I know that's you. Can you cut that? Sh can you cut that crap out, please? I'm trying to do my business here. And then you see her shaking about. And then she, when he opens the door, he finds her dead with a throat slit, which I think might have been using the uh, hunting knife that he also comes with. And then uh, as he gets scared, you know, he kind of backs himself up against the wall, and he and this thing starts coming through. He dodges the first blow. Second blow, it kind of you know catches him in the leg, and then uh, when he backs up against the wall, it goes right through his torso. Spicy things. Now, taking a look at this, you know, there's not much to say about it, but that's not a bad thing. I try to critique these figures as little as I can because there's literally nothing to critique. But just, I guess, one word of warning is that this actually is quite sharp. But one thing I really do like about it is the sculpting on it, and it actually does look like a proper sort of bit of metal that you'd find. Maybe, say, you'd use it for, I don't know, camping or such. But it's been done in this really nice kind of sparkly, silvery metal paint. And it really does fit it well. Now, going on to our second accessory. We shall be looking at... The Flare. Another iconic uh, kill from the film. And 
honestly, I love how they've done this. I just want to try bring this into the light a little bit more so I can show you one of the really cool features they've done with it. There we go. Turn it, turn it down a little bit. As you can see, you know, it's just your basic flare. You got some white at the bottom, red at the top, with the uh, black rings to kind of establish where the uh, fire slash smoke bits will be coming out. If I do like this focus again. You can see that they sculpted it really well, and I really actually love how they've sculpted it. They've sculpted this, like, you know, more like swirly towards the top and more like crackly and ferocious at the bottom, where, of course, the flames bursting out and. They've used this really nice mixture of kind of pinks here, like at the middle of it, and um, oh, they just, you can see they've used a really nice kind of mixture of pinks at the top and uh, greys towards the top and pinks in the middle for where like the smoke colours coming out, and I really like how they've uh, done it white at the bottom as well for like where the light, the uh, where the light itself is coming out, and of course we all know this from the. Uh, car fixing scene where the guy's like okay can you cut that out I'm trying to fix the car here and then he just jabs the uh, flare gun into his mouth like guess what kids flare guns for dinner whoop, whoop. everyone's favourite now taking a, look at his look, eh, taking a look at his second accessory I guess we'll have a look at the uh, little peg thing now there's uh, not much to say here Except for the fact that, you know, it's a little peg. It looks nice. They've sculpted it. And I really like that they've included this. Because although you don't get to see him use this much in film. You do get to see how he uses it in film. And uh, how he uses it is when you... I can't remember any of the names for the life of me. Because I haven't seen a film in, bit, in quite a while. I mean, I've seen... The one that I do know the most is um, uh, Part 4. Because that one was... Yeah, that was my favourite of the Fridays. Is either that, part 4 or part 6, but part 5, I will say, does come in close. Same with part 3. Those ones kind of hold special to me, because uh, I watched them, I was like, oh, hey, look. I'm going through a kind of happy phase in my life, so yeah. And uh, but again, with the uh, massive skewer sort of thing, you can see it's been done this really nice silvery sort of paint job. And it's been, it's been fairly sculpted well, you know, it's nice. He's got the flat head at the top. Where you'd be uh, hammering it in, using it to peg it to the ground, in case, or if you're Roy Burns, using it to uh, go through a counsellor's, uh, not a counsellor, using it to go through a guy's head, and then pin him to a tree. Another accessory is the hunting knife. We can see here that it's got this really crudely designed handle, which I really like. You can see, if you'd like to just, you know, focus there. Apologies about all this. But you can see that's got a really crude handle and it looks really nice with all this kind of metal work for the uh, hilt of it and just pure wood being used for the handle. And it just looks, it really does look nice. I don't know why, there's just something that has a sort of charm to it and they've done a glossy sort of overlook of it. So it generally does look like a, like a uh, fresh wooden handle and they've just gone and put some oil over it. Now the uh, blood effects as well look great. You've got a more sort of brighter red with some red smearings around it to look like the blood's kind of, you know, been uh, smudged about. Moving on to his meat cleaver, you know, this is also coming from an iconic scene in the film. He cut, he killed about two people with this. Uh, the uh, I'm pretty sure it's both the odd hillbilly people. He kills the uh, one of the weird biker guy who's like running around. He's like ah, and also the um, what was the name? I can't remember for the bloody life of me. Also the uh, odd like hillbilly mom that he kills with it while she's trying to make stew or something. She's like, come in here and eat your stew. And then uh, Roy just like, like actually, how about no? And uh, brings this through the window where it goes straight into her forehead. Hence this really nice blood splattering on it. You can almost see like it actually has gone into someone's forehead and the blood's just kind of gone, kind of squared out and started fading along it. Fading's not the right word, I don't think. But yeah, the handle's really nice too. They've done the rivets and they've actually separated the uh, woodwork and the metal, which is always a nice touch to see. Now, two unique 
things which actually can go together is the uh uh, what do they label it as in the box? I'm pretty sure they labeled it as a garret. But in my opinion, I'm pretty sure that this is the uh, belt that Roy uses in the film when he, uh, in actually a pretty gruesome scene, after he catches two of the counselors, you know, doing the do, and then he uh, kills one of them with the shears, which I'll most likely display him with. And then he also uses the belt and this twig over here, which actually looks amazing like you can see this dirt, you can see these dirt lighter on the inside and it looks like real wood which i love because they've done all lumps and bumps and stuff and it looks fantastic where he uses this uh ties it kind of as the guy's backing up he uh, puts it puts this around the guy's eyes and you know then starts tightening it and tightening it before the guy starts like screaming in pain and if i just you know try to do it here quickly so one thing I like is that they've, uh, for the uh, rings on the end, each end, they've uh, gone and used actual metal as well, which I think is a really nice touch. Oh, there we go. But there you go, you can uh, kind of do that. Sadly, it doesn't come with a counselor figure to recreate the kill on, and sadly it doesn't come with a tree, but I guess you can have a... Rory holding this or something like he's about to use it, almost like the cat in the hat meme. Where the guy walks into the toilet and he just like goes with the belt. You could have him holding it like that. Now onto a kind of smaller um, accessory. It's a spare hand. I guess you could use this in combination with the shears and, su eh, and such. But again, really nice detail. You can see it's got this really nice sort of skin sculpt. You can see all the knuckles and veins popping up and all the wrinkles in the skin. Really nice skin tones, dirt around the knuckles, the uh, hand looks great, so does the uh, inside palm and stuff, and it's rolled away. Fantastic. But you can see it's also around here, it's just got this really nice sort of dirty overwash, like he's been uh, out killing people for quite a few hours now. Moving on to probably one of my favourite accessories that comes with him, the garden shears. Sorry, something was up with him there. But as you can see here... The woodwork on the handle, fantastic. The silver parts, fantastic. They look like actual metal. The blood, again, fantastic. The teeth of it, fantastic. Everything about this is fantastic, and I love it. The woodwork genuinely looks like woodwork, because it's like kind of oiled wood, like it's been put through a machine or something, and then they've like gone and oiled it over. don't know the exact name for the process, so I'm pretty sure someone down in the comments can correct me if you'd like to. And also, there we go, and we can see that the blood hair genuinely does look like it's been used. Um, also, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this comes from the kill where the uh, girl lying down naked, and uh, he comes along, and Roy comes along, and he's just like, what's up? Sex? No, thank you. And uh, jabs her in the eyes, except we don't get to see that much because of uh, all the censoring and the cuts that the film had to go through. Now, moving on to the most recognisable and iconic of Roy's accessories, the machete. Now, this is a trademark accessory to have with a Jason figure. You can't think of Jason without the machete. One thing I really like about this, though, is that, um, yeah, it's similar to all the other ones with, like, the kind of black handle and the little rivets. But they've done a darker blood here, and it almost looks quite different. Because if you can see that... The blood looks more smeared than the others, and it looks darker, and almost looks like it's actually been done on top of it, and it's, you can see it coming up there. It genuinely looks like actual blood. There's something, I don't know, I just really, really like that. If they continue to do that on, the, on like, other figures, then, hell yeah, I'm definitely going to be buying them. I mean, I'm going to be buying them anyway, because I love horror and crap. But that is a really nice touch. It actually looks like a more sort of, dry blood which has been used more and it's like he's been uh using it for more of the kills than the other accessories and that is a wrap for the review of this absolutely amazing figure which is the friday the 13th part 5 a new beginning necker ultimate roy burns i've had an absolute blast reviewing this figure and it is genuinely such an amazing piece i've wanted it to be a thing for so long and you know 
they only announced it, what, two or so years ago? Back in, like, I think it was 2018. And they teased us with a single image of a hand holding a flare. And since then, the hype has picked up and picked up. Because the last time we got this figure was in retro cloth form. And to say the least, it really could have done a bit better. Like, the face sculpt, I don't know, the chin looked almost a bit swollen. Like, I'm pretty sure... Thanos Jason isn't the thing, but it seemed with the uh, Retro Cloth one it was. I'm not critiquing it though, because, you know, they were still in the early stages, and that was a good step, because without that one, we wouldn't have had this, which is an absolutely amazing figure, and I'm so glad I got it. And again, if you could pick this up, say, if you're going to a convention or something, I don't know, like a convention near me, DevCon, Comic Con, whatever, pick this up. Whether you're just getting into the Friday franchise or just the horror genre in general, this is an absolutely amazing figure to start on or just have in your collection, and I definitely would recommend it. I'll come back to you guys with another review in some fun soon, and this has been me reviewing the Friday the 13th Ultimate Roy Burns figure. Peace out.